careful and slowly, so that the thick, heavy door wouldn't squeak as it swung open, the brothers entered the darkness of the creature's lair. They had to be quiet. If the monster's keeper heard them and found them, they would be doomed. Cautiously, they crept to the slumbering monster of the night. And sleep, it looked so peaceful. It was hard to comprehend the agony and torment the foul creature had brought to their lives. The creature had appeared three years earlier, its unholy presence bringing an awful change, and since then nothing had been the same. The nights were filled with dreaded howling. During the day, evidence of its rampage was made clear. Walls ink splattered in strange patterns. Beloved objects destroyed. Loved ones changed forever. It was time to put an end to this madness. But it was a dangerous task, and the brothers had to be cautious. They could not alert the creature's keeper to their presence. Silently, one brother raised the wooden stake and brought the tip down on the chest of the creature, nervously licking his lips, while the other readied the wooden mallet. They gave each other a furtive glance, a nod, then down fell the mallet, striking the top of the stake. The tip of the stake pierced the creature's pale soft skin, and the monster awoke with a deafening howl of fury. Quickly, the mallet was brought down again, and the stake slipped through the monster's ribs and into its heart. Black blood welled up from the wound, and the beast shuddered and shook, then fell down, silent. The deed was done, and the beast was destroyed. Suddenly, the door swung open and light flooded the room. It was the beast keeper. Boys, my god, what have you done to your brother? 